Security threats are more prevalent than ever. Trellix is on a path to redefining the future of security to ensure organizations are able to tackle these challenges. They have developed a platform using AI that minimizes the time to detect and respond to threats and to protect against future attacks. My name is Olivia Kinghorst and I'm here in Davos to speak with Brian Palmer, CEO of Trellix. So welcome to the program, Brian, to beautiful Davos, a place that you are, of course, very familiar with because of the World Economic Forum. I'd like to dive right in. Trellix's goal is to have a fresh, new approach to security. What does that mean in practice? Well, first of all, Olivia, it's great to be here with you in Davos and excited for our discussion. Yeah, so first of all, Trellix is the leader in extended detection and response. And we see a real opportunity in the market to build an enterprise platform for cybersecurity. That doesn't exist today in cybersecurity, uh, and we're building that enterprise platform. So we're a global company, we're focused on cybersecurity, uh, and we're in over 75 different countries. I, I think the most important part about what we're trying to do is improve security operations. We see a real opportunity to improve the way cybersecurity teams are battling against attackers. And that really starts with the Chief Information Security Officer. And the Chief Information Security Officer is our most important customer, and our job is to help make them successful as they protect their organization. So for our audience watching who is not in the world of security, can you just talk to us about the current state of security? What do you think is working and what's not working so well? Sure, well, there's a lot of opportunities, I think, for the good guys. And one of them, obviously, is the advancements in artificial intelligence. Gen AI gives us an opportunity to build better models, to use our data better, to do better analytics. And that all helps us in our response and our remediation to many of the attacks that are coming. So that's obviously incredibly important. We also see advances in the talent as well. So the CISO job has gotten to be so important. I did that job almost 20 years ago, and it was much easier then than it is today. Today, the CISOs must be very technical, they must have strong operational capabilities, and they must have the ability to work in a global environment with constantly changing complex threats. I think from a threat perspective, the most important threat out there remains nation states. Nation states are engaged in cyber warfare, and often it's not a fair fight because they're going against private organizations, smaller organizations. For many years, nation states battled against nation states. Those rules were broken, and now they go after private companies. And what we're seeing is a lot of disinformation. We're seeing a lot of focus in the last six months attacks from nation states are up 50%, which is very concerning. I think the second thing that I would talk about is supply chain attacks. Supply chain attacks mean the attack surface is so much broader. For a long time, companies were only worried about their employees, their infrastructure. Now they have to be worried about all those partners that they work with as well, which makes it much more difficult. And the final one for small and medium businesses is ransomware. Ransomware is having a major effect on small, medium-sized, and public organizations. And it's having a real economic effect by causing business disruption and also, in some case, business extinction. There seem to be so many threats on the table. Are you worried? Uh, I'm not worried. You know, our customers are arming themselves with one of the best platforms in the industry. We're seeing, as I mentioned, the talent continue to improve. Uh, and one of the things we like to talk about is this is soulful work. So we're attracting more and more smart uh, professionals to this industry, which is very, very exciting. Well, you seem to be an optimist. Why don't you just share with our audience how you also try to keep your own organization safe and secure? Yeah, great question. Uh, it first starts with great people. And uh, we have a great chief information security officer named Harold Rivas. And Harold works across our security team, arming them first with the best technology, much of which is our own Trellix technology. We use our own technology and supplementing that with best in class products across the security industry and then making sure we're recruiting the best talent to help us secure not only our enterprise, but also our products that we put out in the market. There seems to be a lot of opportunity going forward, and I'd love to press on the topic of AI, which you already mentioned. Big topic in 2023 and also for 2024. 
What new doors and opportunities do you think that unlocks for the world of cybersecurity? Well, I think a couple. I mean, first of all, it unlocks opportunities for the bad guys. So the bad guys are using it to build better malware. They're using it to have perfect grammar when they go and do phishing, which for many years they didn't do. They can now put these great emails out that seem very real, uh, that can get people uh, into a potentially troubling situation. But I think for the good guys on our side, it allows us, number one, to build better analytics, which is really critical, uh, to be able to analyze the data we have much faster and much more effectively. That allows us to create better response and remediation efforts. So we're seeing that Gen AI is allowing response to be much better and faster than it used to be. Predictive intelligence is another piece of that puzzle. How do we garner the right intelligence from out in the market and then put that intelligence into our products? So those are a few of the ways that I think AI can use, be used positively, but also can be used uh, negatively by the bad actors. So Brian, take us 10 years ahead when we look into the crystal ball. Security is increasing, we're seeing the progress there, but on the flip side, threats are also increasing. Where will we find ourselves in a decade from now? It's a great question. And I think as we continue to, to play out this constantly evolving game between the attackers and the good guys, it's always a changing landscape. I think one of the step function changes that we'll see um, that's very different from when I started in the business is what, what happened for many years was we had people that were primarily driving the security and machines were helping or complementing. I think over the next decade, machines will get in the driver's seat and people will actually supplement and complement the machines. So I think that's going to be a big change. I think the battle will continue. I think the good guys will continue to win the battle uh, in the end and we'll make improvements over the next decade. Let's really hope we see that. I just wanna finish up by taking a look at the World Economic Forum. The theme this year is of course, rebuilding trust. Tell me, what does that mean to you and your company? Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways to think about trust, especially in the global economic environment. Cybersecurity plays an important part in that. If we can't trust the technology and the information and the systems we're using, trust erodes very quickly. So I think cybersecurity has a seat right at the table here at the World Economic Forum because we are foundational to building trust in today's technology systems. If there is one topic that you really hope will be on the discussion table at the WEF, what would that be for 2024? I think it's really resiliency. You know, we have to think about resiliency in our systems, uh, also in our economic systems and in our uh, public systems as well. So I think it's about uh, business resiliency. Well, ultimately, we'll have to see what the program unfolds. And I know that you have a busy week ahead of you. So thank you so much for sharing your insights and have a wonderful time in Davos. Thank Thanks, you. Lee. Thanks, Olivia.